Hello everyone, welcome back to Morton's On The Move. Today we're gonna to be sharing with you guys about the trip that we just got back from in our truck camper. The shakedown trip after rebuilding the engine. We're gonna share with you guys a bit about where we went, what we did, and how the truck performed. And then we're gonna talk about some upgrades that we made to the truck camper over the last year, but got to finally test them out on the move on this trip. So stay tuned. So as you can see, we've got the truck camper installed on the truck and we're actually getting ready to take it back off because we just got back from about 1200 miles traveling in it and still in one piece. The uh, engines ran extremely well and it just, it, it performed exactly as I, I hoped it would. Um, it had plenty of power. We did do some tuning to the engine and we have basically a, a fuel economy tune and a power tune and it ran extremely well. The fuel economy tune actually felt a little lower powered than, than we had before. However, we did see about a 10% increase in fuel economy uh, overall. We averaged about 10.8 miles per gallon on this trip. Now that may sound horrible, uh, <laughs> but considering how big these tires are and what this truck is, we're actually really happy with that fuel economy. It's better than the fuel economy in that thing. <laughs> overall, the trip went extremely well. Where we traveled was, uh, we went downstate. Uh, we're up in the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. We traveled downstate to the Lower Peninsula to um, go on a sibling's tubing trip down a river. And that was an already planned trip. And that's why we had the deadline to get this truck built and back on the road. That trip took us about 600 miles south. We got to cross the Mackinac Bridge, which we always love. We have a beautiful evening for crossing the Mackinac Bridge. We've been across this bridge hundreds of times and it is always just an incredible experience. It is an insane feat of engineering. I believe it is the largest suspension bridge in the US. I could be wrong on that. It's at least one of the biggest. It's not like the largest span. The largest free span or something like that. It's impressive. I think it's about five miles over the water from one side to the other. And you're a couple hundred feet up, up here. How's the truck running? Awesome. The truck has been running fantastic. Uh, we still have sort of a little vibration problem we need to work on, but the engine has been turning along. Plenty of power. I'm so happy. We got a campground down at the location where everybody was tubing. Everybody else was pretty much tent camping, but we had the opportunity to take this, so why not? So we took this and we had a really good time uh, floating down the river and just enjoying some, some family time. One neat thing that we were able to do while we were down there was we were able to test out a product that had been sent to us, which is a tent air conditioner. We've got it in the back of the truck here. Let's take a look at it. Look at this. It's just an actual little tiny air conditioning unit, air inflow, air outflow, uh, and then the cold unit. And this is where the uh, evaporator coil is. I was really curious to actually test this thing out and, and see what we thought about it. I've tested it out in, uh, in a tent before and uh, it does work. It does what it says it's supposed to do, but uh, we hadn't actually had a chance to test it in real humid climates. And uh, the people who used it said that it did work for its intended purpose. It did what it was supposed to do. Uh, however, there is one ma major issue. It needs to be tilted in such a way so that the condensation drains out the back and it actually drained out the forward into their tent. So they had a big puddle in the morning. Dry air, puddle on the ground. Not so sure that's uh, exactly what you're going for. Interesting concept. I think it might be a little uh, cumbersome for a tent camper to bring along. Maybe in a small space like this, it's really, really small on the BTU side. This is a, a DC unit and uh, it actually has a battery on the bottom there. That's a, that's a battery. That battery, I'll run it for about three or so hours. You could also plug it into an auxiliary power pack. Overall, it's a 24 volt unit, it runs extremely efficiently. It's got variable speed, variable compressor. I don't know, kind of a neat product. Not a sponsored video for them, so uh, free plug. I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing that we got to try out on this trip. Another thing that we got to try out on this trip, and I intended to 
try out during that um, that uh, tubing trip was something that is called the car generator. Uh, and this was another product that was sent to us. What it is, it's basically an inverter that you hang off the front of your car. And the intent is that you can run your car and basically turn your car into a generator without having to bring a generator along for say a, a tenting trip or something. We don't really need that for this camper because we built a pretty impressive power system in here. And that's all in our build video about this. But we thought, Maybe somebody else would have use case for it because we were going with a bunch of tent campers. And while we didn't actually use it on the tenting trip, ironically, as we were leaving, we had a huge storm come through and it knocked out power to most of Southern Michigan. And uh, Caitlin's sister was in dire need of a generator because her uh, freezer and a whole bunch of their food was about to go bad. So we lent this thing to her and she hooked it up and had a great time. It saved all her food. It really saved the day. And I don't have it in person to show you because uh, she has it, but she'll bring it up to us in a couple weeks. That was a really cool product. I think it's a it's a neat thing to uh, to keep in mind if you if you need a generator but you don't necessarily want to bring one along. A lot of cars are designed to be able to idle for long periods of time and not have any issue at all. So it's not really a super high powered thing because the alternators in cars are relatively small and you don't want to overheat them. All of that information comes with the unit, but really cool product. Uh, and it, it was a kind of neat thing to, to get to test out. I think we're probably gonna give one of those car generators away in the next couple of months here on our Morton's on the Move giveaway page. We usually do a giveaway every single month. So we hope that you head over there and sign up for our newsletter if you're interested in being uh, notified about those giveaways. Currently, we actually have a giveaway running on our site, which is the Hughes Auto Former EPO Watchdog and Voltmeter. Be sure to head over there. We're giving away either a 30 or 50 amp version for whatever type of RV you have. Okay, so after we went on this tubing trip, we basically drove around and visited uh, some other friends and family and uh, parked this thing in their yards. Uh, basically mooch docked, if you will. Although we're so efficient on power, we hardly even need to uh, need to plug in. We hardly even needed any water. And that's another thing that I actually want to share with you guys today is one of the major upgrades that we've made to uh, this unit is we finally added a composting toilet. We've got composting toilets in every one of our RVs, including the big coach, except for the, the mid bath, which has a standard toilet as well. But we went composting in this unit. So I'm going to hop in here and show you that and a few of the other upgrades that we were able to test out on this trip. So here it is. This is an Ogo composting toilet. It's a pretty interesting square-ish design. Uh, open it up here. You'll see it separates the urines and the solids. Over here we have the air vent that I routed through here and out the outer wall and then a little 12 volt fan that goes in there. Now uh, basically this has a chute that opens up like that. We plumbed the urine side of it directly down into the floor where the toilet used to sit into our black tank. No water necessary, no urine bottle to dump. This has been an amazing game changer for the use case of this truck camper. Now we really like composting toilets in RVs because uh, we've actually had less smell issues with them overall. They use zero water and in a camper like this that uh, we only have 30 two gallons of water in this. We used a lot of it with the toilet and well, with this last trip we used a lot less water which was awesome. So big win for the composting toilet. Uh, we've tried a number of different composting toilets over the years. We've tried the uh, Nature's Head, Airhead, and now the Ogo toilet. They all have their pros and cons but the Ogo has been kind of our my, my go-to recently. I've installed two of these Ogos so far in our campers and, and one in a friend's camper and uh, it's worked out really great for us. Sometimes you can get a little bit of a smell issue outside. Um, usually it's just kind of like a, a musky type smell, but I, I solved that by putting a piece of uh, just carbon vent filter stuff in line. And I also upgraded the fans in this unit to make it a little more powerful and then force it through that carbon filter and just zero smell. It's been amazing. So big win for the composting toilet. We made another huge modification. I wouldn't say huge, but huge upgrade to this camper, which is a shower curtain. So directly across from me is the shower. And originally there was this metal bracket that went around here. And I'm sure if you go back to our original video, you can see that. I got rid of that and installed this awesome 
Holocross vinyl shower curtain. Now, this is a product that we got from Rec Pro. Again, not sponsored, <laughs> but we just really love this. It, it opened up the shower and made it so much larger without getting trapped by that uh, shower curtain. If you are in a, a small shower, you know, you want to do everything you possibly can to, to get more space in it. And this has just been amazing. It really, yes, it's a, a small shower, but it added uh, so much a room for us and actually usability of this shower has been absolutely incredible and this trip really showed us that this was a, an amazing upgrade the one thing i was a little a little trouble with is it, it did actually it looks like it quit it discolored a little bit because it was wet for so long in the wrapped up portion so what we learned is that after we open it to get out close it again and let it dry out uh, otherwise the, the water kind of traps back in here i'm sure that could be like a mold issue um or it might even damage it in the long long run of course it being a camper you know this isn't really a, usually a full-time type thing but overall pull across shower curtain huge upgrade shower head here we actually have an article about the, our favorite shower head so i'm gonna let you dive into that if you want to know what shower head we use absolutely love that as well but there's one more thing that in it made the shower just that much better. And let's take a look at that. Okay, so you know how RV water pumps like to turn on and off and make a bunch of racket and noise? Uh, super, super annoying. And a lot of times you can spend a lot of money and effort on trying to add accumulator pumps and, and different things to get the pump to run quieter and smoother. Well, uh, this was a product that was being worked on and um, I, I worked with the guy to kind of learn a bit more about the product installed this over a year ago and hadn't had a chance to really test it out. But what it is, it's an intelligent water pump controller. Now he doesn't have a great name for it. He calls it the uh, IRVWPC, Intelligent RV Water Pump Controller. Uh, but it is a basically DC PWM controller that actually modulates the speed of the water pump based on water pressure. Yes, they're water pressure controlled, but they're just on off switches. This is actually going to take a pressure sensor and say, I'm going to turn the pump up and down to modulate for the pressure that you need. And what we have found is that it basically eliminated the need for an accumulator tank and has made our water flow quieter and super, super smooth in this truck camper. Uh, let me show you. So here's the water pump, right? This little box right here with those little lights on it is the pump controller. So it was super, super simple to install, just a couple plugs into the water pump, and then uh, added this thing right here. See this? That is a pressure sensor, basically a pressure transducer. Comes through this wire here into this box, and that modulates how the pump runs. So normally, water pumps kind of just hammer on and off, on and off. I'm gonna go ahead over here. I'm gonna turn on a slow flow of water with our, our Acuva water filter. The pump turned on, it's running. Can you hear that? Smooth and slow. It is not hammering on and off. I'm gonna turn off the water up here, and you can hear it shut off. Off. Hear it modulating? Isn't that cool? So we're gonna turn on the higher flow here. You can hear it running higher now, right? I'm gonna turn the water flow down at the sink. It'll go super, super slow. And we can just trickle water here. Just trickle water. And it doesn't cycle on and off. It doesn't hammer. It is super good flow no matter where we set it. Really low flow. Pump is still running at that speed works amazing. Now that is what I mean by improve the shower even more. Trying to get temperature right in a shower can be really hard in an RV because the water is kind of like hammering on and off and it screws with the temperature, it screws with the water tank. But this super, super smooth flow solved all of those problems. A huge, huge up 
upgrade. Uh, I absolutely love it. Don't really need it in our big coach because we do have a very large water accumulator in there, but any other RV definitely going to be adding one of these units. So again, not sponsored, but just love to share with you guys the products that we find um, the are our favorite. Uh, so definitely be sure to check out IRV WPC. Links for all this stuff um, in the uh, in the description. Big win for, for that pump controller. So there you go. We had a successful trip. It went extremely well. It felt so good to get back in the camper and get it going down the road. We still have quite a few upgrades that we want to make to uh, this rig. Uh, the next thing that I really want to do is I want to add some auxiliary uh, water and fuel tanks. I think I'm going to add them kind of up here in front of the in front of the the truck, we have quite a bit of space in there for uh, longer longer stints. And then the truck itself, uh, it's running great. However, it's not the most comfortable to drive down the road. Um, these big military tires are just kind of known for being hard to balance. But I don't think it's balance isn't the issue here. We actually have like a, a, a out of round issue. Shaking. Vibrating. <laughs> it's really vibrating. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm gonna to try to true these tires myself. And that's gonna be a bit of an adventure. I might ruin them, um, but I will bring you along as we attempt to do that. And then I also wanna rebuild the entire steering system up here. These giant tires put so much pressure on the steering system that uh, we have really blown out a lot of uh, ball joints, U joints. So we're gonna upgrade uh, some sway bars. We're gonna do a custom steering system up here. Don't look for that video immediately because that's gonna take a while to get to but that's kind of our, our plan for the truck camper before our next big adventure in it. Overall though, just love this truck camper. It's so, so much fun. And uh, we look forward to being able to bring you along on some future adventures. As always, thank you so much for joining us here on Morton's On The Move. We hope you guys stay safe and enjoy your travels. Be sure to head over to mortonsonthemove.com, sign up for that newsletter. You'll be notified of our giveaways. You'll get our weekly comics. And we will also let you know if we upload any videos. Please like, subscribe here on YouTube as well, and we will plan to see you down the road. Safe travels, everyone.